So hi everybody, I'm Elaine from Cerebra and I'm really thrilled today to be joined by Emily Nicole um, who's joining me for a chat about how she's using her life experiences um, to help others and to generate some, some positivity and positive thinking. Um, so quite an inspirational and determined young lady, I think. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to say hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me this morning. No problem, Elaine. Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to talk to you today. I'm really <laughs> excited to hopefully make some people smile and just have a chat, really. Oh, that'd be great. So just tell us a little bit about yourself to get us started this morning. Yeah, no worries. So my name is Emily Nicole. I'm 22, nearly 23. Um, I've got cerebral palsy, which means that I'm a wheelchair user. And I suppose I'd call myself a part-time YouTuber. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. So you've recently uh, written a blog for Cerebra, haven't you? It's on our website and I was uh, having a read through that and it really explains sort of your life to date really, doesn't it? And all of the things that you went through um, growing up to get you to where you are now. So I think it's fair to say that things all, weren't always positive, were they, as you were growing up? No, it's really important to note that obviously I'm very grateful to be where I am today. Um, and I've had lots of positive experiences as a result of making my videos on YouTube. I've had a lot of positivity and a lot of great experiences that I would never have had. And even though I love the fact that I'm disabled now, I haven't always. And like you said, in that introductory blog, I spoke about my life. Um, from the very beginning, really, so how I got to where I am today, but obviously the importance of every lesson in that journey, the good and the bad. Yes, yes, and you know, there must be um, a lot of young people out there today struggling with the sorts of things that you, you struggled with, um, you know, growing up and growing through school. So is that part of the reason why you started, um, started your YouTube channel? Yes, so the reason I started my YouTube channel was when I was younger, for some reason, in my mentality, and it was only me, my parents were always very encouraging, and they never saw my disability as a disadvantage. However, as I grew up, through certain experiences in my life, I took it on myself to kind of think that my disability made me lesser. So growing up was quite tumultuous for me because I always felt different. And I saw the difference as a negative, unfortunately. Um, so when I was a teenager, I thought, well, there must be someone out there like me, because obviously the difference was becoming more and more apparent. And I was thinking, well, I can't relate to my peers. You know, they're running off doing their own thing. Things like sports day, for example, all these things were cropping up. And I was thinking, well, who am I then? What am I? What can I do? So I went online and I started looking at people with CP or girls in wheelchairs. And I went on YouTube because there was a lot of things I didn't know how to do when I was younger. Um, and I was quite a late bloomer when it came to doing just simple things like getting dressed or, you know, learning how to maneuver my body and things like that. So I went on YouTube and I was Googling things like how to get dressed in a wheelchair, how to transfer in a wheelchair, and nothing came up. So me being me, obviously it was like, oh my God, I've been proved right. I am a freak. There's no one out there like me. Uh. So yeah, then when I kind of grew up and when I was comfortable to embrace myself, I thought, well, I'm going to make that content that little Emily needed to kind of say, here I am, I'm like you. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> you know? And I've watched a couple of your videos as well. And it oh they're just a joy to watch aren't they because you are it's really practical and you are helping people to actually do these things with sort of the the fun and the positivity involved with it doesn't make it feel like it's a difficult thing to do and it's okay if things go wrong and you know it's just part of it isn't it yeah 100 percent. and i think the importance with the for example there's a video where i get dressed uh, and a lot of my mates are like are you really gonna do that? Are you gonna sit there and leave your target and put the bra on? And I'm like, yeah, of course I am. There might be someone who needs help. But like, I'm 22 now. And some days, and this is really important to mention, there are some days when I get up 
I'm tired and it takes me half an hour to get dressed. You know, it's not a struggle, but it's important to say that, you know, even though I'm, you know, even though I get my disability now and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm respected and as strong as I've ever been, I still get my off days. You know, I'm not perfect now, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to help other people realise that, you know, you don't have to be superhuman, you're normal, we're normal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And I also read in your blog that you're doing some work for the BBC now as well. Are you helping them with content? Yeah, that's right. So I've been a content creator for around about a year for the BBC Sesh. Um, the BBC Sesh is an online platform um, where they try and show the latest talent from Wales. Um, and they do thought-provoking videos, mostly comedy. But I've kind of tried to change the narrative there because I started doing comedy there, but then the reaction to my videos and the positivity, the head of the BBC Sesh said, why don't we use this platform to change people's perspectives? Keep the comedy, but get informative. So the last couple of videos I've been doing, they've had funny elements, but they've been really, you know, informative. The last one I did was about how to dress and dress well in a wheelchair, what to avoid, you know, things like don't right. wear things that are too baggy, don't wear puff sleeves. And it's so amazing to me how many people can relate to that because I, I'll be honest with you, I joined the BBC and I thought, well, people are only going to relate to me if I'm funny. There are so many disabled comedians. There are so many disabled, you know, comedy sketches, things like Little Britain, for example, you know, where people relate and understand the disability because it's being used as a comedic device. So I joined it and thought, right, you've got to be funny, you've got to be funny. But now it's so refreshing for me to be like, no, I can talk about things like fashion and be a little bit funny, but also say, look, there's a message here. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's putting it over, isn't it, in that relatable way, mm. I suppose, isn't it, that, that people will want to watch because it doesn't seem all sort of like a serious informative video, which it is informative, but uh, it's a pleasure to watch. So, really so if you, I don't know, if you could go back in time um, and have a chat with your 12, 13 year old self, what is it that you'd want her to know? What would you like to really get over to her? If I could talk to my 13 year old self, I would just say, just accept yourself. The quicker you accept yourself and the quicker you realize that there's nothing wrong with you and you allow yourself to experience things like happiness, things like acceptance, the sooner you realize that you're not this, 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 you know, this monster and that you're worthy of so many things and you're worthy of relationships, you're worthy of friendships, you know, you're worthy to feel normal by allowing yourself to be normal, it, life will just get better, you know, your disability, it's not going to stop you, only you will stop you, it's not the wheelchair, it's you, and I've got to be honest and I'll be as candid as I can with you, as I always am, I had the biggest issue growing up. I realized I had the issue with the wheelchair. I had the issue with the CP. Nobody else was me. And when I sat there and kind of thought, right, well, you know, there's people out there who are in much worse conditions than me, who are really confident and who get on with it. Maybe I'm going to give this a go. And when I kind of accepted myself and thought, right, well, okay, I'll give this a go. I realized I had the biggest issue. And I think, it's really hard to look inside yourself and think, wow, I had the worst relationship with myself and I was encouraging this narrative of bad stuff to happen in my life because I told myself I wasn't worthy of anything else. So, yeah, if I was to talk to my 13 or 12 year old self, I would just say your disability is not life limiting at all. It's life changing. You just got to want to live your life. Well, that's a, a really, really strong message. <laughs> So what is next for Emily Nicole? Do you know what, Elaine? I wake up every morning now and I'm like, oh, what now? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Do you know what I mean? I, I've, only, I've been running my YouTube for around a year and last month I was talking to the PM for goodness sake. You know, I, just, I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh, it's amazing.
amazing how things take off, don't they? And they snowball and they escalate. So yeah. it's really exciting because you are in a position now, aren't you, to sort of help change perceptions and attitudes. You know, my friends say to me, oh, Emily, you're such an influencer. And it's like, no, no, I'm only an influencer if I can influence change. I don't want to be a fashionista. I just want to be a trailblazer in changing people's lives and making them feel good. And yeah, just being positive. Oh, that's fantastic. So if people want to um, to watch what you've been doing, just log on to your YouTube channel, is it? That's right, yes. So if anybody actually wants to check out my videos, um, my YouTube channel is just my name. So it's Emily Nicole Roberts. Also, if there's anybody watching that may be in a situation similar to me, or may want me to cover anything specifically, in my series, How Emily, I talk about how I do certain things, so how I exercise, how I drive a car, how I get dressed. If you know of anybody, or if you personally have sat there or stood there and thought, well, how can I manage this? Please ask me, because I'd love to cover videos to try and help people, because that's not the videos at all. You know, I don't get any requests, but if there is somebody, or if your child, or a friend, or you are thinking, oh, how does she put her shoes on? Please ask me, because the channel is for, you know, the channel is for the viewers more so than me. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants to reach out and have me cover something, please just drop me a message. Um, I'd be more than happy to do so. Oh, that's fantastic. And if anybody's, because this will be on Cerebra's social media, if anybody puts, you know, a comment, um, on the post and we'll share it with you Emily and uh, and pass it on so thank you so much for chatting with me this morning it's been a pleasure to meet you I feel all sort of positive to start my day now. Oh, yay. <laughs> it's gone too fast it's gone way too fast I know I know we'll have to do it again we'll have to catch up again yes it'd be great it would be yeah. absolutely great thank you for the opportunity to speak today honestly I am so immensely grateful Oh, it's, it's been a pleasure. And uh, we can go and enjoy that lovely sunshine now as well. And uh, yeah. finally. <laughs> well, take care. And I will definitely catch up with you again soon. Okay, great. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.